um, capabilities that Julia has to integrate it with a software suit called Madagascar. So Madagascar is, no, that's, that's not Madagascar, sorry. Um, Madagascar is a, an open source software package for multidimensional data analysis and reproducible computational experiments. So this is straight from the horse's mouth, this is straight from um, the Madagascar website. And basically what it is, it's a collection of different softwares and they allow you to manipulate these multidimensional data to create these computational experiments that hopefully people can reproduce. And, and that's essentially what it is. And so I'm gonna show you how I've kind of incorporated Julia into that, into that framework. So as I've mentioned, uh, Madagascar has a bunch of different programs. For example, has SF Spike, and these programs they're run in the command line. So SF Spike, and you can give us some, some options, and every program has their different options, and so on. Uh, and this one in particular would generate what we call a spike, which is just a bunch of zeros, except at uh, sample 300, there it would put a one. So this is what we would get if we were to plot the results of, of uh, SF spike. Now, one of the interesting things that it, uh, Madagascar does is in the Unix philosophy, it can pipe things into other programs. So uh, here we take the spike and then we pipe it into SF bandpass, which surprisingly band passes our signal to a maximum of two hertz in the case that we're using uh, seconds as, as a unit. And, and basically, we now obtain this new data set which was created from uh, piping one program into, into the other. And so, uh, Madagascar is really just a collection of a lot of these different programs to do a lot of different things. Uh, the focus is obviously geophysics, but there's a lot of other stuff that can be general, that can be used in, in other areas. So there's a lot of image processing, which we use in geophysics. Um, there's a lot of physics-based modeling, and there's a lot of di different stuff in there. And, and yeah, as of this month, or well, last month pretty much, there's 1,840, and it basically keeps growing. So. How do, these, uh, how do these things communicate? Well, if they're communicating through pipes, they're communicating through uh, files, right? And in particular, they're communicating through a specific file format called RSF. That stands for a regularly sampled file. So it's very similar to X-Array, if, if you're used to that. And all it is, it is a collection of uh, data, and each different dimension has uh, number of samples in that dimension, the spacing between the samples, the origin of the axes, and a couple other metadata information like label and the unit. So it's a very simple file, it's very, uh, it's very universal, and, and that's what they communicate in. So if you want to, to, to run, uh, to start playing around with this, all you need is an SF program, then you give it to an RSF file uh, through a disk or a pipe, and then you pipe it into another one, and so on and so forth. And that's how we play the Madagascar game. That's how we go uh, from nothing or maybe a little bit of data into uh, Im images of the subsurface and, and so on and so forth. Now, sometimes we don't want to do this in the terminal. Sometimes we want to do this inside of, for example, a Python session. So we need to use the Madagascar Python API. Now, this is just a collection of things to read input, read uh, write output, and read the parameters that are given. And so this particular program here clips our data set. So if we ran it like this from the command line, we would just get this kind of, uh, this kind of, of, of graph here. It just cuts it at 0 0.01, which is given by this parameter. So this is the Python interface, and it's generated from the C interface, which is the first uh, and it's the most native uh, Madagascar API. And so the way that they went from the C interface to the Python interface is they got a lot of swig code and they created these, these automatic things and then they kind of patched a few things here and there. Julia, um, sorry, and 
And so in Julia, we also want to do that. Um, we go from the C API, but just as, as a matter of co completion here, there's a lot of other APIs. There's C++, Fortran, Java, MATLAB, and, and, and now uh, the one that I've contributed is the Julia one. So let's take a look at how Julia does the same thing um, as the previous API. Here we have a, a higher level function call that's just called RSF read, and the in just says that it's reading from SCD in, and then we get the, um, the parameter clip, then we clip the data, in this case in Julia we, call, we clamp it, and then we write it to standard output. So we can run the same thing here, and we'll get the exact same result. But now it's a little bit um, higher level, and it simplifies the, the C API, which uh, Python also kind of tries to do, but uh, struggles a bit in particular because we have to generate a lot of swig, like boilerplate code and, and so on. Um, so another thing that I've, I've, I've done is basically, I've also been able to, to write very simple code in order to read and write these, these uh, RSF files. And all I do is I wrap C calls. So it's extremely easy. Uh, I've been coding Python for a while now and I still don't know how to do Swig. I've been coding Julia for less than two years and I've been able to write this API quite quickly, right? Now, that's not the only thing that an API uh, for Madagascar should be able to do. Ideally, we also want to be able to interact with other Madagascar programs that somebody maybe wrote in um, Fortran 77 or in, in, in Java or whatever it is. We also want to be able to interact with that particular piece of software inside of our uh, Julia code or inside of our Python code or, or any other uh, API that you're using. So we don't want to have to rely on, on, on just what we can do ourselves from within a Julia session. We also want to be able to rely on what other people have done and what they have contributed as well. So uh, you can uh, already do this in, in Python, but you do it in like this. You, you import your, your M8R, your Madagascar um, API, and then you call the program, so this should already be there, in this case, spike. You give it a zero because you, is, there's no standard input. So this is like a really weird way of, of giving STD in as an input to, to something, right? Like you call this function, but then this is like an index of sorts. And then this will give you back another um, object which in order for you to pipe it into another program, you have to also index that. And then when you want to get the data out, you index it like this. So it's really weird, um, it's really clunky, and it's very hard to pipe things into, into other things. Uh, and also very importantly for us that are dealing with like very large uh, data sets is when you execute this line, for example, this top one, you actually write to disk. And so when you want to just pipe something from here to here, you have to actually write it to disk, which is definitely not ideal, right? So I said, you know what? I don't want to do any of this crazy stuff. I want to do something which is much more natural and much closer to, uh, to how you do in, in, the, in the command line. So I came up with this kind of approach. I have the same uh, programs that are defined in the Madagascar Julia API. But now instead of uh, passing weird file objects and file descriptors, I take, uh, in this case, I take no input and then I curry it into another program and then I curry this into RSF read if I want to actually get the data out. If I don't, I can keep piping into other things. Uh, or if I want to write it to disk, I could use RSF uh, right here, for example, and then I would actually write it to disk. So this interface is actually much closer to what you would obtain from um, if you were to write this in, in, um, in your shell. And it also writes it directly to a pipe, which can be in disk or, or may not be in disk. It uh, doesn't really matter for us. All we know is we're asking for a pipe and we're giving a pipe. And that's all uh, that, that we care about. And in order to do this, 
Um, it was actually extremely simple. I thought it was going to be really hard. Uh, but with the metaprogramming, it's actually extremely simple. Uh, I basically just took all the programs that I knew were there in, in binaries, and I iterated over them, creating these kinds of functions where I read a pipe, then I process the arguments that are given to, to, to this particular function that I'm creating, then I run uh, this, in, I spawn a process which takes the pipe and then outputs uh, to that same to the to the like the same writing pipe, and then I just return the actual pipe. So, what happens is we with this kind of for loop, I create 1,840 different functions, uh, which have to be precompiled. So that's a bit of a snag, but. Um, it really simplifies my job, my job as a coder, and it allows like this really simple interface um, that the user can can uh, is, can be much more comfortable with. So, just to kind of uh, summarize, this Julia Madagascar API it can read and write files, which is the most basic thing. It uh, uses C calls and native C types to do that, and it's kind of like very easy to to debug and to to code it up. And it also interacts with the ecosystem through these two function, functionalities of the Julia language. So thank you very much. If you're interested in Madagascar, uh, go here, look at documentation. If you're interested in seeing this code, just go on my GitHub or my webpage. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, questions? Very great talk. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm just curious if you've given any thought to exposing the RSF file format as a native Julia object, where you would wrap it and give it extra behaviors that Julia is able to know about. Um, no, I haven't actually thought about that. But it's a it's a really good idea because I think, like, it's a very universal file, and I think it can be very easily ported into like X Array or something like that. Um, I'll, I'll have a, I am actually going to another workshop very soon that I'll be writing Julia for Madagascar, so I might give that a go. Yeah, let's so chat. Thanks for that. Cool. One more question. Okay, great. Uh, let's thank all the speakers again.